Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Derringer, and I'm from Boundary Systems. Just wanted to thank you all for joining us today. We're going to go ahead and get started. I hope you all recovered from Halloween yesterday, and I'm glad that you were able to make it to this week's webinar. This week, we are pleased to welcome one of Boundary Systems' newest partners, and they will be leading the presentation. We have recently collaborated with Vera, who is a leading tech company in protecting your intellectual property, and we are excited to show you how that applies to engineering data and specifically how they interact with PTC products such as Creo that you're used to hearing from Boundary Systems. So I will let them tell you more and they'll be providing a demonstration. And with that, I'd like to formally introduce Grant Shirk from Vera. Go ahead, Grant. Thanks, Nicole, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. It's uh, the day after Halloween, as Nicole said, and so we're all a little bit in sugar recovery, but what better way to do that than to spend 30 minutes with CAD and data security? Or maybe it's just me. Um, looks like there's a few people still joining us, so we'll do a little bit of housekeeping first. If you haven't used GoToMeeting before, uh, you have an opportunity to send us chat messages if you're having issues with video or audio, and Nicole and I will help you with that as we go. Also, would love to answer any questions that you have. And if you're like me and you forget your questions quickly after coming up with them, there is a question and answer tab in the GoToWebinar interface. Go ahead and put your questions in there. We'll get them organized and put together, and we will try to get to those either as we go, if they're pertinent to the conversation, or we'll settle them all up at the end. I've also got with me here today, Bert Granches, who is my Vice President of Solutions Engineering, and he'll be driving our demo of data-centric security. And so hopefully we'll, we'll hit, get some good questions fired over to him as well. All right, let's jump into this. Uh, the plan for today is to spend 15, 20 minutes to talk about this challenge of protecting intellectual property, particularly in an economy where we just can't compete if we're not collaborative, and extending that collaboration both inside our organizations, but then outside throughout the supply chain. I like to say here at Vera that we've oversolved the collaboration problem, making it very, very easy for people to take sensitive information outside of the company which is good, but at the same time, it introduces a lot of risks for, for data loss. I, I like to think that Ben Franklin uh, was a secret manufacturer because he understands this problem very, very well. You know, his classic quote, three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Uh, that's the way we would love, you know, don't shoot the messenger, but we have to operate in a world where we protect our intellectual property, even if we do need to send it externally. But the problem is, is while we might trust our primary contact at some of our manufacturers or vendors, you can't always trust the second and third hops down the line. And in fact, we're seeing a lot of trends in the information security community where we're from, that it's those third parties that we work with that are actually most at risk for data breach. And so in an environment and in an economy where this community, the manufacturing community, are really the engines of economic innovation, whether you look at it in terms of the massive contribution to the U.S. GDP or even just the contribution to innovation itself around patent holdings and patent filings in the company, the vast treasure trove of trade secrets, R&D, engineering and manufacturing data is a rich, rich ecosystem that makes it all the more attractive to someone trying to capture that data and all the more important for us to defend it. At the same time, as I mentioned, it's these third party groups that we work with that are probably most at risk of attack, data loss, etc. If you look at all of the recent incidents, whether it was Netflix or Verizon or Anthem uh, in, in other industries, it's data and information that had been shared externally that was captured and exploited. Uh, and there's a recent report, if you haven't seen it from Verizon, it's a free download. It's their 2017 data breach report. There's a whole section devoted to this challenge in manufacturing. And even more so in this organization, 93% of those threats were external to those, those organizations. So that is a big, tough challenge that we need to really shift our thinking in order to, to address. And unfortunately, unlike other industries, where the 
risk of data loss is really centered around financial information, uh, personally identifying information or personal health data. In manufacturing engineering, it's all about the designs. It's all about the trade secrets, the formulations, uh, and the, the product specifications that would give a competitor an advantage in, in the market. And so as a result, there, there's, a, there's a lot of different challenges in, in manufacturing that are driven simply by the way that we do business. And I think it's summed up very, very well from what we see from our customers as a struggle to really protect that intellectual property as it moves through the supply chain. Uh, whether, whether it's your challenge of working with very complex production teams, both internal designers as well as external quoting processes and builds and design and quality, where you're forced to share this information externally through your PLM or even through other file sharing tools like Box, Dropbox, ShareFile, you name it. At the same time, while we have really, really strong visibility into the physical components of our supply chain, where we, where we see risks and disruptions and we're having issues with certain parts and suppliers, the digital component of the supply chain is almost hidden these days. We, are not, we don't have good visibility into what happens to designs and drawings and pricing and orders as they flow through that process. And we need to be able to tighten down on that a little bit more. Certainly, there is a huge competition for talent, whether it is supplier and vendor talent or internal employees. Uh, there have been countless instances of organizations who've had to go and uh, seek out a, an employee who left and went to a competitor and took trade secrets with them. There was actually a very high profile case in the Northeast recently at a pharmaceutical company where an employee left a cancer startup took what they valued at one and a quarter billion dollars worth of intellectual property with him to a competitor uh, who subsequently put a competitive drug into the market at an accelerated pace. These are real, real risks to the business. We don't want to talk about them, but there are definitely things that we can do to tackle not only these kind of ongoing and insider threats, but also these external attacks on, attacks on IP and trade secrets that we're talking about. So I think that's the nature of the problem, right? We have rich amounts of data that are driving not only our business, but an ecosystem of businesses that sit around us. Because of the way we have to work in order to deliver on the promise of our products, we've introduced a lot of new security challenges into, into the system. And unfortunately, what that means is a lot of the traditional approaches that we've brought in in order to protect this data simply aren't up to the task. It's not that they're ineffective. A, a, a DLP tool or a classification tool or disk-based encryption on your laptops serve a very critical purpose. However, they don't solve the challenge of how do I protect my information once I send it outside? Once I have to trust someone outside of my organization or somebody with a device I don't manage with critical IP. You know, and whether you're looking, if you've already taken a step into a cloud with a cloud access security broker or a CASB, you know, they're a great monitoring tool. They'll extend your DLP to cloud services, but they can't protect that data once it's there. You know, they'll, they'll give you good monitoring and, and information, but that's about it. DLP is the same. It's making this best guess label on, should I let that go? Should I block it? Uh, should I send somebody an alert? But again, for everything that we've let go, and it's a kind of a best guess scenario. Once it's gone, it's gone. We can't do anything about it. And certainly as we're looking at information internally, we can kind of get a sense of what there is, but it still doesn't protect it once it's gone. It's that problem of external sharing that we need to examine and invest in if we're going to tackle some of these challenges. And just for context, that's the approach and the technology that Vera has built and what's allowed us to help protect IP at companies like Arthrex and JBT and General Electric uh, and Selenase, uh, companies that manufacture a wide variety of products uh, in, a, in a wide variety of sub-industries. But we really think about that problem of tackling how do we secure information that is being sent externally 
but do it in a way that doesn't slow down your process, doesn't force your employees to change how they work. And so what we do is we provide three layers of protection on information. And we can do this whether it is a simple office file or if it's your most complex drawing in Creo. It really uh, kind of agnostic to that kind of information. The first layer of protection we provide is encryption. It's table stakes, anybody should be able to do that. But the ability to protect information at rest and in transit across your organization and ensure that it is protected from, uh, from attack. The second layer is to proactively enforce a set of access controls, basically a VIP list or a white list for at any given time who should and who should not have access to sensitive drawings and engineering data. This is very, very critical, particularly when that information is shared externally. Because if I were to share something with Bert and Nicole, uh, and I didn't want them to share it with anybody else, I can proactively state that they are the only two people who have access to that information. And if they happen to intentionally or accidentally forward it somewhere else, uh, that individual or that organization would not be able to access that file. But Vera goes one step further, because those first two rings really cover those challenges of protection of data at rest and protection of data in transit. It's equally important, particularly when you're working with complex tools like Creo and Windchill, to be able to enforce permissions around that content. Really make sure that if I've sent a file out to a vendor, that I can protect their the ability for me to keep my designs intact, uh, to make sure that either they cannot manipulate or share them anywhere else, and even restrict ability for people to take screenshots and copy uh, shapes and objects out of those drawings and put them somewhere else. Really protecting against data exfiltration from files and drawings that are in use, as it were. By taking this approach, by really collapsing a lot of these class of protections down to individual data files, not only does it allow us to follow that information anywhere it travels, really essentially attach the security directly to the file itself as opposed to the application, it allows you to not only dramatically improve your ability to protect that information. Uh, but it also allows us to do it in a way that is almost invisible to your end users. They will know that they're working in a secure file, something that is sensitive, and that's really, really good for your security awareness programs. But at the same time, we don't get in the way. We want to be able to for them to work seamlessly and naturally in their their preferred tools. And that helps your organization because it reduces the, fr the friction it takes to work with you while you still retain control over your information. And that's why this idea of data-centric security or security that follows your files wherever they go is so critical. Because not only does it allow you to protect all of your intellectual property, no matter what kind of content it is, it opens up your organization to be able to work with more partners and more vendors in a trusted way, no matter how you have to share files with them. You know, you might have one, one company that you've been working with for a long time, and you can invite them into that PLM system. You may have another vendor or provider that you have to share through a box or a Dropbox, and you want to be able to keep control over that content even as it heads through the file. Or you might be working with somebody who sits behind the great firewall and you know you have to transmit data to them physically on physical drives. Uh, ensure that even if that, that, that the package is intercepted on the way or is inspected, they won't be able to get access to the content on the drive. Beyond that though, you're gonna get a lot better visibility and understanding of what's happening across your digital supply chain. We give you the ability to track and audit absolutely every access and action that's taken with one of these files, and Bert will show that to you here in a couple minutes. Uh, but also give you the ability to change how this information behaves. Update that access control list, change permissions. Uh, and so as your business relationships change, if I stop working with a vendor, I can ensure that they'll never be able to access those drawings again. If I am working on a very rapid iteration with a supplier on a particular part or design, and I, it's critical to the safety of my final product that they're not working off of an old design, I can watermark, lock down, or visually make it clear that this is an older version of the design. Please move forward to the next version. It really helps clean up version control along the way as well. <clears throat> And so finally, that's why we're so excited to work with 
boundary as well as the PTC ecosystem is really providing this concept of full dynamic data protection for CAD files, for PLM data, and provide that always on security for this complex engineering content. We really want to be your partner in protecting your most critical intellectual property. And again, the benefit of this is that we are directly integrated into that ecosystem. So not only are we protecting those those computer-aided designs in, in, in Creo, but even managing access to information dynamically as it's checked in and checked out of Windchill uh, or whatever PLM system you have to do. The ability to, as you see here, work with secure content, depending on your permissions, exactly as you did before, uh, is a really, really critical capability uh, when, you're, when you have multiple designers working on complex projects around the world. Uh, and then finally, it's that it's that ability to uh, dynamically control what your collaborators can do with this information that is so important. Whether you are doing simple kind of DRM or IRM capabilities around managing editability, saving, making copies, uh, printing out uh, hard copies of the document to more document management and data loss prevention capabilities around automatic expiration of content, uh, watermarking, screenshot restrictions. There's, there's a lot of rich capabilities in there that we can help tailor to your particular processes. And having the ability to update that at any time means that, as again, as my relationships change, I'm going to be able to change my partner's relationship with the data at the end of the day. <clears throat> this, you know, this isn't theoretical. This is something that we're seeing with uh, <clears throat> both small and large manufacturers around the country. Uh, for example, JBT, John Bean Technologies, they are a provider of a lot of, I think of them as Tarmac IP. A lot of the jetways, airport infrastructure, uh, large design materials uh, come from their, their organization. But prior to Vera and prior to really making the shift to a data-centric mode of thinking, they were having challenges with losing control over these proprietary drawings. They were facing competitive pressures in the market from people who were trying to copy what they were doing. They also had a really, really complex distribution model for their their designs. You know, they were flattening these things into PDF. They were distributing them through file sharing tools like Box and Citrix ShareFile. And it, it created a kind of unmanageable mess of collaboration. And they needed a single, essentially, pane of glass to be able to see what was happening with information. Uh, and ultimately, they they were seeing leaks of information through email attachments and for people taking things home to unmanaged devices. And so their goal, what they were trying to do was establish a set of simple, secure workflows that were flexible enough to meet the needs of their business, but defend against these different kinds of data loss and competitive threat. So they brought in Vera. They started shifting their organization from thinking about defending against possession of data to more of this access control model. And now, not only can they see if and when users are accessing PLM files, but they can block a lot of those actions in real time. As they move through their vendors in the supply chain, they can expire access to specific assets, uh, particularly, and they've even used it for marketing use cases, which I found very, very interesting. <clears throat> And then, excuse me, and then at the same time, they, they did accomplish this streamlined workflow across a, a global manufacturing organization, uh, which was incredible. And they have the reporting and analytics and tracking from Vera to demonstrate that people are doing the right things with information at any given time. Uh, they're not a standalone uh, success case. Uh, I mean, we're definitely seeing this, like I said, with manufacturers with you know, a couple hundred employees or fewer, as well as those with several thousand. Uh, so I'm going to pause there. I think we're right on track for what we're trying to get done here. Bert, I'm going to pass this over to you. Uh, and then from here, if you do have those questions, if there's anything we can clarify for you through or after the demo, uh, please go ahead and put those in the Q&A section and we'll get those answered for you. Bert, are you ready to go? I sure am, Grant. Thanks.
I'll go ahead and transfer over to my screen. Let me know when you can see it okay. Looks good. Awesome. So right now, what I have in front of you is, and as Grant was talking about, the uh, the ability to, to work within a, a CAD software like Creo um, is really about the creation of intellectual property, and that property needs to be specifically protected. And in this particular case, I've started with a, a very you know simple new uh, part drawing within Creo. Uh, those that have worked with Creo probably recognize this as one of the, the standard tutorials. And I have full capability to work with this because this is not a protected file at this point in time. And uh, you know this is designated by the fact that we don't see a bare policy bar, which we'll see here in a moment. But if I needed to say round some corners. I could come over here and make some updates to this in a real-time way. So point one, two, and then we just click on some of the, the lines here and we'll get the, uh, the rounding that we're looking for here. So this is all part of you know, what we're trying to achieve with you know, standard working within Creo is the ability to, to update that and to reflect that across the board. Now, what's interesting and where we've worked with companies like J, JBT and others is really around how do we start to protect this new intellectual property as it's being managed by the, uh, uh, the company. And so as I go to save this file, there's a couple of things that's going to happen that you'll notice. So first things first, we have a dynamic watermark that is now present on the actual window of Creo itself, so that uh, you know it's referencing the fact of who is actually working on this document at one time. Now with Vera, we're actually operating in the background. We're logged in as the user Bert at Vera.com, and so based on that, we this watermark is dynamic. It's going to reflect who's actually working on this particular system at one time. So in the event that I decided to take a picture of this with my phone then this watermark that's made up of millions of different pixel colors uh, and is very difficult to remove will designate where this leak may have stemmed from. Additionally, we have our Vera policy bar here. Now, this is just an overlay bar. You can see I can move it around that dictates the type of policy that I have. In this case, because of the nature of my relationship to my company, I can edit this particular file and I can print as well as work in an offline mode. I can easily minimize this to get it out of my way if necessary, but this is a great indicator of what I can and cannot do with the file. I'm not allowed to copy and paste into non-secure documents as an example. However, I am able to continue to work with this document as I need to. Again, if I came over, say I wanted to round a couple of more edges, I could do that without issue all with the Vera protection applied. Now, as I go to save this, or actually let me complete that, uh, that rounding and I can go to save this file again, it's going to continue to upload back into the windshield environment. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to simply exit out and then we'll come back into Creo. Give it a second to open here. And I'll log back into the workspace. So here you can see I'm logging into a windshield workspace. And at this point, I can look for those designs. Here you can see we have those set up right here at the top at my Vero Demo 2. And if I click on that and open back up, as I open this file into Creo, Vera is actually going to be applying that protection on the fly. So as it's stored within Windshield itself, it's not going to have that level of uh, uh, protection in, as part of it. So it, you can easily manage that within your existing storage systems. But anytime you're pulling information out of that secure repository, which is Windshield, then we're going to apply those protections on the fly. Any additional edits that I make to this, um, you'll see that we are able to track that behavior. And to be frank, I'm actually going to need to come over here and check it out. So let me just uh, come back one more time and 
do that one more time because I need to check this file out in order to make and save those changes. Again, we're going to come back into the Windchill workspace. I'll log in. I'm going to check out the uh, the very part two, so it looks like it's already checked it out for me. So that's great. And now, if I go to make some additional edits here, we'll do a round again. Come over to a couple of the other edges, and get out. We can revolve this. We can include these parts that we're creating within larger drawings as well uh, to where you have secure parts working within secure drawings. And you have the full capability to manage and edit that in a very secure manner so that when others who may be coming in to, to share that experience or to share that IP or take that part and put it into another drawing, you can change and control how they can work with those individual aspects. So now if I come over here, and save that file. I can also come back in and check in that piece. So I'll go ahead and check that in. We'll go ahead and finish that. So now at this point, we've checked it back into Windchill in a way that uh, we are operating securely. Everything that's being touched within Creo is now secure. Again, we're limiting the capabilities that we have within this environment. Now, if we come over and, and look at this within the Vera dashboard, I'll bring this over and we'll maximize that for a little bit. I can see from an audit trail within the Vera admin portal what's going on and how I'm interacting with these different aspects of the documents. I can see that when I had access to this, I had a particular security policy assigned to this particular document. I was assigned this based on a particular rule. I can also see that I was able to view this under a particular policy and start to generate and track behavior associated with this file um, since it's been protected. So essentially, since I created that new part and saved it, we've started to track that access and what's been happening to that document while it's in use. Here you can see that I edited the file contents with a collaborate policy. And so anytime a user is interacting with that particular document, we're able to track that behavior pattern. We're able to understand what they're attempting to do or trying to do with the document and if it's achieved successfully or not. Even down to the fact that we're able to pinpoint to specific areas based on public IP where this user might be accessing this content. So if you see people trying to access this content in locations that would not be expected, you can take appropriate action to lock that file or restrict access even further. So let's take one quick look here at another example. So I'm going to open up another file. Now, this file is actually on my desktop, and it's just been sent to me based on an email. I'm actually not going to check it out of the Windchill environment. Now, when I do this, we're going to notice that this particular file has a much different kind of policy associated with it. We see that we still have the dynamic watermarks, and I'm unable to, uh, to come in here and make copy-paste changes. I'm going to be blocked by the underlying operating system. I can't copy and paste this environment. If I come over and try to make selections of particular sketches or sections of this document, I'm unable to copy and paste based on the examples that I'm seeing here. So this is going to be blocked by the underlying aspect of the, the VAR protection itself. And so that as a whole is being restricted here and we're unable to exfiltrate that data from this particular environment. So again, everything that we're trying to do here is going to be tracked and audited within the Vera dashboard. And we have a great deal of control over how we can manage those policies. Coming in and creating our own custom policies, being able to 
do things like restrict editing, saving, copy, paste, restricting printing of particular documents as well. These are all capabilities that we have. And we can change those on the flies coming in here and looking at this particular document. We can switch the policies on the fly from track to view only, collaborate, et cetera, so that we can restrict access in a very dynamic nature based on the access and the security concerns of that particular end user. So Grant, at this time, I think I'll hand it back to you. And if there's any additional questions, we can certainly field them here on the call. Yeah, absolutely. I will start looking through those. And thanks for running through that, Bert. That was, that was really helpful. So again, if you do have questions, I see a couple of them coming in here. Uh, please go ahead and put those in. And as we go, I will handle others. Uh, so let's see what we have here. All right, so first one, actually, Bert, this is probably a good one for you, so to get you back off mute. Uh, so we looked at this a lot in uh, in CAD. Are, is this only for CAD and engineering files, or can I use this elsewhere in the organization? That's a great question. So yeah, while we're showing this within Creo and how we can work with CAD-based environments, we can actually support just about any kind of file from a protection, very protected standpoint, meaning that we can encrypt and provide access, dynamic access control to any kind of data or file type. Additionally, working throughout the office suite with media and audio files, including video and images, uh, as well as the Adobe Creative Suite, we can provide data and use protection like we saw here with the dynamic watermarking, being able to block things like printing uh, and what have you. So this is a key aspect to uh, uh, how we can not just work within CAD software, but across the entire uh, organization to provide detailed protection and auditing of your information, even once that goes out of your particular area of control. Got it. Thank you. And then I think I'm going to jump on that a little bit too. You mentioned video. One of the more interesting use cases I've seen from our customers as they they, they spread the use of the product is they're actually using it to protect the training and safety videos that come along with their products. There's often one, a good amount of competitive or, or in, you know, intellectual property that's transmitted in those, you know, how do you use what's designed for, what are their specifications? But they also use it to track compliance. If they are delivering something to a, to a field and they have requirements around delivering and watching training, they'll actually use that dashboard functionality you just showed to track and make sure that customers or, or end users are actually viewing the safety and training material and they're able to audit and report on that at the end of the day as well, which is helpful. All right, next one, um, let's see here. Okay, so this next question is about, you know, do I have to go in and make all those changes myself manually? We have we have hundreds or, or thousands of these files. Uh, the answer to that is, is no. You, you certainly can do that manual updates and securing that Bert was showing you, but one of the, the key advantages of Vera and again, trying to get to that invisibility uh, aspect uh, is around automation. So you can set this up so that as content is created or when that information is shared, uh, based on what we know about who is taking that action and what what we know about the, the file or the information uh, that you're trying to share, uh, we can automatically apply security and update permissions uh, based on that action. So, so really most of your employees won't have to change anything about what they're doing, but you get security and control uh, kind of for free along the way. Yeah, and, and just, to, just to recap on that, you know, as we saw in the demonstration, you know, that was a, a, an excellent example of where that automation comes into play. As the end user of the Creo environment and work you know, as a designer or an engineer, I wasn't having to think about what needs to get saved, just the, or what needs to get protected. The act of saving the file protected it, and then checking it in and out of Windchill ensured that I was looking at that document with appropriate permissions. So all of that together was uh, set up behind the scenes through very simple uh, uh, configuration rules, and 
from that point forward, I'm able to work as I normally can in a very secure environment. Got it. All right, and then it looks like this is the last one that we have for the morning, and then we can can let you all go. Uh, but the question is, all right, you showed a lot of this security for files, but you mentioned data loss through email earlier. Uh, is there anything you can do about email? Awesome question. Uh, so. Yes, I, I'm glad you picked up on that because Vera is not just a file security solution. We're a, a platform that can protect pretty much any kind of data that's moving across your organization. In fact, today we just uh, announced the next iteration of that for Vera for Mail. Uh, the ability to, whether you're using uh, Microsoft as your mail provider, Outlook and Exchange, or even something on the web like Google, uh, the ability to apply that same kind of protection that Bert showed you to the body of email messages, as well as to the, the files and attachments that are going along with them. So really, again, getting back to that idea of one solution, one pane of glass to manage all of your sensitive data and communications is where Vera can can fit in. And that's, that's why we're really happy to be working with Boundary in this situation because we think there's a ton of impact we can have for your businesses. Uh, all right, I think that is where we're at. Nicole, is there anything else uh, you need from us before we wrap up today? I don't think so. Just a thank you for joining us and being guest presenters on Boundary Systems webinars. And thank you all who attended. Um, we will make sure that a recording of this gets posted on YouTube so you can share with your colleagues. Um, and I think that's it. Have a happy Wednesday. All right. Thanks, everyone.